Today, we're gonna to talk about five things you may not have known about this lens. What is going on guys? I am back. I'll talk about why I haven't uploaded in like two months in a different video. But on this video, we're going to talk about this new Suray 75mm crop sensor anamorphic lens. Now there are plenty of unboxing and first impression video about this lens. So I'm going to go straight into the things that are unique about this lens. Uh, we'll start with the most obvious ones first. But as I count up, I'm hoping I can cover some topics that are not mentioned before. So first things first, this lens has the most anamorphic characteristics out of all the Suray lenses so far for me, I like to use anamorphic lens for the streak lens flares and the oval bokeh. And this 75mm has plenty of it when you want it. And the key word here is when you want it. If you have a strong backlight and you put this lens pointing directly at it, you're gonna get a whole lot of Michael Bay. On the contrary, you can still get more control image if you're not shining a light directly in it or even slightly to the side. And I know this is only 1.33 squeeze. The higher the number you squeeze, you're supposed to get like more oval bokeh, right? But being 75 millimeter, this lens does give enough oval bokeh and these bokehs are smooth since this is a 13 aperture blade lens. Uh, more blades you have, the smoother those bokeh is gonna be. I know this is not apples to apples, but just for reference, so Sony 85mm f1.4 G Master has 11 blades. Now that's out of the way, let's start talking about not so obvious things about this lens. So we mentioned that this is a 1.33 squeeze, which means during your edit, you have to like stretch the horizontal aspect by 133% while leaving the vertical exactly where it's at at 100%. However, to make that soccer ball perfectly round, I stretched the horizontal aspect only by 128.5%. Now you're like, hold up. How is that possible? It says 1.33x on the lens. That's because depending on your focus distance, this number changes a bit. That 1.33 is for the max distance focus. So if you're editing a close-up footage from this lens and thinking like, oh, I gained a little bit of weight over the past one year, what's up? If that's the case, try stretching about 128.5% instead of 133%. Now this is a pretty precise number if you're filming close to minimal focus distance, which is around four feet, I went ahead and made sure that the perfect perfect circle fits inside this perfect square so you don't have to guess. And the magic number was 128.5% on the horizontal scale. This variable stretch factor is going to be present in other Suray lenses too, but I noticed it more on the 75mm. The focus meter goes from 35 feet to 65 feet very quickly before going to infinity focus. Just a little bit of pull and you're traveling 30 feet. So this brings me to the next point. This is not an easy lens to manually focus, especially for objects that are far. If you're shooting wide open aperture at 1.8, your depth of field on a tack sharp focus is already shallow. When I was filming a moving subject while I was on the move, it was really hard to pull focus. Now granted, I'm a little bit spoiled by Sony's autofocus system, but I ended up like just ditching the focus motor and pulling focus with my hand since I get more precise focus. Since the focus ring has a nice consistent dampening on it, I found it much easier to pull focus by hand. Fourth thing you should know is that this lens does focus breed. Now most longer lenses, especially around this price range, does focus breed. That's when you pull focus, the lens zooms in and out a little bit. This is not out of ordinary, but I'm mentioning this because this 24mm doesn't have much focus breathing at all in case you got used to that lens and this is something you should be aware of in case you're hyper focused about focus breathing. The fifth and not last thing you should know is that this 75mm is a little bit warmer than the 24mm Suray anamorphic lens, which is also a little bit warmer than the Sigma 24-70 DGDN Sony E-mount lens. As you can see in this example here, I kept the same lighting and the same camera color temperature and the 75mm here is warmer, which means that this lens will actually match more closely to this 35mm Suray lens since that was the warmest lens before this 75mm came out something to consider if you're trying to match colors of these different lenses. So there you have it guys. Hopefully you learned something new about this lens. Um, I know a lot of these points sounded like this lens has a lot of limitations, but don't get me wrong. This lens is a fantastic lens. It's optically well engineered for the price with good sharpness and no corner chromatic aberration. And the fact that you can now pair it with three other different focal lengths gives it much more value. If you film a lot of portraits, I think 35mm and 75mm is a good combination since it has a similar 
similar color temperature and it shares the same filter thread size at 67 millimeter if you need an epic wide establishing shot then 24 millimeter on top of that is a good addition if you feel like you need to know more about anamorphic lenses by Suray check out my 35 millimeter and 24 millimeter review I got some good information in there including how to change the anamorphic lens flare colors and how to get rid of that chromatic aberration when using some of these lenses so I'll leave the link to those video in the description but thank you so much guys for watching this video until the end I really appreciate you guys I'm basically starting a second season for this channel soon with lots of videos to help you guys so make sure you're subscribed until next time make it a good one